One thing John Robinson actually did a really good job of was finding linebackers in the mid to late rounds. David Long and Jayon Brown were day three picks that took a couple years to develop, but then by the second half of their rookie contracts, they were ready to step in and be high level contributors. And it looks like that cycle's continuing with David Long in Miami and Monty Rice set to replace him. So in this video, we're gonna look at what's made Monty Rice an effective linebacker so far and where he needs to improve in his first year as a full-time starter. Before we get into the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also follow us on all of our social medias. You can find the links to those in the description below. Monty Rice was one of the most productive linebackers in the NFL last year on a per snap basis. He had a run stop rate of 12.1%, which ranked third among qualifying linebackers. And he had the seventh lowest missed tackle rate at just under 5%. As a run defender, he's quick to diagnose the play and he does a good job working through traffic. He has great short area burst and he moves at full speed in pursuit, but he's a really consistent Consistent tackler with the stopping power to finish tackles through the ball carrier. Tennessee's defensive line makes the linebackers' jobs a lot easier in run defense. Jeffrey Simmons and Tier Tart consistently hold their own against double teams, so it's hard to get blockers climbing to the second level, and the linebackers are able to stay clean and just shoot through open gaps. So for most linebackers, the ability to shed blocks is a non-negotiable, but the Titans have been able to get by with smaller linebackers who aren't as effective at the point of attack. But if you look at a player like David Long, for example, he started off as someone who was kind of being protected by the scheme, but he developed into one of the better block shedders in the NFL. By his fourth year, he had so many moves that he could execute at a high level that he was pretty much unblockable, and that's what took his run defense from good to great. And if Monty Rice can improve his consistency engaging with blocks and add a couple more moves to his tool belt, I think you'll see a similar transformation. He has a lethal juke move that he uses to evade blocks. Great example here against Jordan Maialata. He gives a jab step to the outside, cuts in the opposite direction, and then dips his shoulder to avoid contact. Even an elite athlete like Maialata is just too big to stop and redirect his momentum. Here's another one against Dallas. He plants his foot, dips underneath, and then he's quick getting back into position. If you're gonna run around blocks like this, you have to be able to get back to your original spot almost immediately, because if you take a really wide angle around the block, you're picking a side and the ball carrier can just go through the other gap. So the crucial aspect of this move is once you get around the shoulder, you slide back to the starting point. So now you're in between the blocker and the ball carrier. This one's more of just one fluid motion, but you can see even a subtle dip of the shoulder is enough to blow right past a blocker that's already committed in one direction. So this is a really effective move for Monty Rice to defeat second level blocks, but he did struggle last year in more traditional stack and shed situations. There are times he'll allow blockers to get into his frame before he punches, and he doesn't really have the length to disengage consistently, so he gets stuck on a lot of blocks and taken out of the play. Right here, he doesn't identify the puller, so he's leading with his back into the point of contact, and he doesn't have the reach with his outside hand to make the tackle, but he's in the right spot here. He just needs to anticipate the puller, split him in half so the inside hand's controlling the block, and the left hand's free to either make the tackle or force the cutback. On this play, Denver's running outside zone, so you've got overtake combos with the right guard and center and the left guard and left tackle. The player on the backside reach blocks the defensive lineman and the front side player climbs to the second level to block the linebacker. But Monty Rice has his eyes in the backfield the whole play so he doesn't see Quinn Miners until he makes contact. Being undersized or having short arms doesn't mean you can't be a good block shedder, but it does take away a lot of your margin for error. You can't really afford to be a second or two late reading the play. Someone like Zach Cunningham, he can shoot his hands up at any point and separate from blocks, but Rice needs to be consistent reading the field and using that peripheral vision so he always knows what direction blocks are coming from. Right here, the Chargers are running power, and I'm pretty sure he sees Zion Johnson pulling. He's just wide with his punch, so instead of getting his hands inside and using that to separate himself from the block, he bear hugs him and gets chest to chest, and Zion puts him on the ground. Overall, Monty Rice is still a plus run defender, but he can go from good to great if he improves his block anticipation and starts getting taken out of plays less often. His pass coverage is more of a mixed bag, but it was a lot of fixable mistakes as opposed to lack of ability. He was a good cover linebacker every year he was at Georgia, and his rookie season, he didn't play much, but I remember the first thing that stood out to me was how decisive he was in coverage. So my expectation for Monty Rice is a well-rounded, do-it-all linebacker, but the coverage wasn't where it needed to be last year. So right here, the Jags are running mesh. I actually remember some people blaming Kevin Byard for this, but Monty Rice is the whole defender here. You can't realistically expect someone in man coverage to work through all this traffic and keep up with this drag route. So Rice needs to pick up Evan Ingram and then 
Bayard would replace him in the middle as the hole defender. On this play, the Titans are showing cover one, but they're dropping into an inverted cover two. The Chargers have the one and two running vertical routes, so Bayard has to widen out to the deep half to stay on top of the first one, and then it's just a foot race between Rice and Keenan Allen to the seam. And the coverage isn't terrible here, he just needs to take a slightly sharper angle to try to minimize this passing window. There are also times he'll be undisciplined with his hips, which takes away his ability to change directions, and in general, he needs to work on keeping his shoulders parallel with the line of scrimmage so he can slide his feet to move laterally instead of having to fully turn his hips every time he changes directions. And then the last thing he needs to improve is how he deals with play action. He does a good job after he bites on the play fake of recovering with a purpose. He doesn't just aimlessly zone off and cover grass. He's proactive recovering depth and finding his assignment, but he doesn't always know where he's supposed to be looking. So there's a lot of wasted motion in his zone drops and he isn't the most fluid athlete moving laterally. So he needs to make sure every step he takes serves a purpose. I think all of these issues are extremely fixable. As he gets more experience, he'll start diagnosing the game more quickly and that'll have a positive of effect on his run defense and pass coverage and seeing Jayon Brown and David Long's development over the course of their rookie contracts makes me fairly confident in Rice's ability to take that step. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also let me know in the comments any NFL players or teams that you'd like me to cover.